Hi there, here's another in my series of 12 tags of 2013. This is a challenge set by Tim Holtz every month. This is his July tag and his inspiration is what I start with. He gives you lots of tips and techniques to play with and I'm going to see where all of that lovely uh, inspiration leads. Tim's tag was quite patriotic in its style so I'm going to do that too except I'm going to go British and I'm going to be using these two girly shades or slightly more girly shades, Broken China and Worn Lipstick. I've got my water spray and my brayer to hand so that I can try out one of the techniques that Tim showed us on this month's tag. To create my flag I'm going to be using masking tape along with Tim's technique. I'm sharing with you my first attempt at this and uh, as you can see I've got a very straight and very effective Union Jack starting to appear but I liked that little bleed that I had and I thought Actually, if this is a shabby chic tag, I need a little bit more of that. So I've decided to rip my masking tape. So I'm starting again to get a little bit less of a defined edge. So I'm just taking a small slither off either side of my masking tape. And hopefully that will just make everything look a little bit more shabby. The masking tape rips quite easily but I just had to be a little bit more careful when I got to the thinner cross stripes of my Union Jack so that I didn't rip entirely the piece of masking tape in half. And there we go, we're ready to start inking. Tim used distress stains for this technique but I'm improvising because I don't have the right colours in my distress stains range just yet. Um, so I'm watering down my distress inks on my craft mat and then I'm brayering them onto my tag. It's definitely a quick way of applying ink to a surface. It's easy clean up because the distress inks are uh, water based and then I'm going to stamp over my tag. I'm not using the black that Tim used on his but I'm using this flowery stamp because I did tell you that I was going girly and uh, and then I'm ready to add the what's going to be a pink stripe on my flag and I'm going to have to mask this off uh, piece by piece and I'm going to use some scrap paper to do this so that I can uh, get my pink stripes onto my flag. I think I'm liking how the masking tape is turning out. So just removing those last bits of masking tape and I think I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. I just want to make it a little bit less pristine I think. So it's out with the antique linen and a bit more spray. Just a little test to see if it's going to be dark enough and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to roll up the antique linen onto my tag. And it's just enough to take that whiteness and I'm going to mop up my ink to create a little bit more texture. So keeping with this shabby theme I'm going to distress the edges of my tag using my scissors and then it's on with some antique linen around those distressed edges I make reinforcers for all of my tags and I've found a use for that pretty masking tape that I created with all the inking and stamping that I did. So I'm just placing a bit of masking tape onto card and then I punched it out with a half inch circle and I'm attaching it to the top of my tag. So I've had a look at my new Tim Holtz tissue tape but I don't think that's going to work this time. I've got these cute cupcake brads, they're a possibility, they match well with the colours that I've been using. I've got these lacy hearts. It could be quite good on here. This is the part in the design process that caused me the most tidying up because I go about my craft room uh, raiding my stash and bringing everything into one place and half of it doesn't get used and ends up having to be put away again. 
<laughs> but at least I find lots of things that I've forgotten that I had. And I quite like this um, teacup, teacups and teapot. They would look quite good. And uh, it's all bringing me towards, definitely towards an English afternoon tea type theme. And I've got some pretty laces that I might try out. And I've got some wooden cupcakes. I think I'm going to go with this cotton lace because it's already a nice creamy shade. However, I can't use it this wide, so I know it's going to be sacrilege to some of you, but I'm going to cut into it. <laughs> so first of all, I'm just going to cut roughly three widths off my lace, and that's the piece that I'm going to work with. And I've decided to trim off that bottom piece because I think um, it will gather up nicely, and I also think it might lend itself to having a ribbon threaded through it. Because the lace is so open, I'm going to try just gathering this by hand onto a strong double-sided tape. And that's just enough to create a nice uh, lacy border to the bottom of my tag. And I'm just going to keep that nice and safe by adding another piece of double-sided tape to the top of it. And I'm using the same tape to add a strip of ribbon. I always like to run my ribbon out to the sides of my project and that attaches itself to the ribbon and is perfect to wrap the ribbon onto the back of my tag. I've got some gorgeous pearly buttons that are perfect for this project. Definitely very English with our pearly kings and queens. And I've got a little strip of ribbon that I've got left over. I think will be a great way um, to highlight the quote that I'm going to put on this tag. I'm just threading a thin piece of pink ribbon through the top of the lace. There we go, I think that's going to be perfect. Now I'm a little bit torn. I did like the little cupcake brads, but I thought they were just a little bit too um, much for this tag. I'm, it's turning out to be a little bit more subtle, and uh, I think that may make me pick the little teacup and teapot brads which are a little bit smaller. I'm just trying out these cupcake wooden cupcake shapes. But again I think I think they may be just a little bit on the big side as well. I really love this challenge because you get to um, really play and move all the elements around that you've got at your disposal until you come up with your final design. And then every now and again in this process you've got to commit and I'm going to commit these buttons to the bottom of my tag. It was a little bit tricky getting them in this position because I've got two layers of very sticky double sided tape so I did need to clean my needle once I'd finished sewing them to the tag. So that's the final button in place and then I'm just tying my thread off on the back of my tag and cleaning that needle. <laughs> I wanted to print my quote on a piece of scrap paper, so I find the best way to do this is to print it out first onto a piece of copier paper and then to attach your scrap of paper over the top of your copier paper using a piece of sellotape along the uh, leading edge, the edge that feeds into your printer first. Now, on my printer you have to place the paper upside down in the printer tray and that sellotaped edge is the leading edge so my scrap of paper doesn't end up all screwed up inside my printer and it works a treat. And then I've used my guillotine to cut my wording into strips and I've also cut a piece of the same cardstock so that I can use it as a mount for my tag when I've finished. I'm going to place my main quote the same place on the tag as Tim has placed his and my quote is, everything stops for tea. Very British, I think you'll agree. And I just want to create a little frame for that. I think this one, this brand's a little bit dark, so I'm going to go with the craft paper. And I'm also going to use my decalage scissors just to give it a little bit of a lacy edge. Time to commit my little quote and piece of lace into position. Now Tim's tag definitely had a major element in the flag embellishment that he used. And I think, uh, along with my little teapot and teacups I need something else and I already thought that I might use a crown but I think I also might need a clock because my quote itself alludes to everything stopping for tea. I hope you don't mind me rabbiting on like this but I always think it could be quite useful to somebody who's new to making tags 
um, to see what the design process is, to see what you can be looking at. For instance, the embellishments that I've picked out, I didn't quite think that they matched my tag, so use your paints or your inks to alter them and make them blend in or uh, coordinate better with what the way your work is going. So I'm using my uh, new uh, addition to my collection of um, distress paints, which uh, I really, really want to collect, and I've, I've got about I think six now, so definitely the beginnings of a collection. And I'm adding little bits of trim to make my crown and my clock look right on my tag. And now I'm going to add a little bit of stitching onto my tag. So I'm using my Tim Holtz ruler and the stitch guide to make the holes for my stitches. And then I'm going to sew a nice stitch line above my quote with some blue embroidery thread. And I'm just going to attach this little strip that says inspired by Tim Holtz. And then I wanted to add some cross stitches to my tag. So I'm just freehanding the holes for the stitching and I'm going to use a pink thread. I always like to pierce my holes first on my tag before I begin stitching. It makes the whole process much easier and you can get a much neater effect by being more precise with where you place the um, holes for your stitching. Now I've finished adding brads and stitching and such like to my tag, I'm ready to attach it to the frame tag. I always like to frame my tags, they're little works of art after all, and I'm using, making sure that I use plenty of double-sided tape to do it as I've got the um, extra bulk of the brads and the lace to contend with and I want to make sure it lies flat against the background. I'm just using my decolage scissors just to give it another pretty effect and punch the hole ready for my ribbon. So now it's time to attach all my final elements to bring this design together and I've decided this is the home for my crown and I'm also going to put the wording on top of it that says in England. So in England everything stops for tea and uh, I think that the crown in this position just draws your eye to the quote on my tag. I've also got my date to still find a place for. Could go here. I'm quite happy with that. I think it's going to go up at the top. But I just want to attach my clock elements. And as you can see, it uh, blends in much nicer now that I've added the distress paint. I'm going to use pin flare silicone glue to attach the clock. And I've also got a pointer again to draw your eye to my quote. And I'm going to add a little bit of girly bling. So adding a little bit more girly bling, tiny pearls to the crown, tiny pink gems to my teacups and teapot, and maybe just a little bit more blue bling on my clock. And I coloured a piece of American seam binding. Uh, I didn't have my distress stones as I mentioned before, but I'm using my ink pads to create the little stripes that Tim did. And then it's time to attach the final piece to my tag, which is a ribbon and a pretty bow. Let's trim the ends and then stitch on a button. So thank you for joining me while I've been creating my version of the July tag for the Tim Holtz's 12 tags of 2013. If you fancy giving it a go and it is loads of fun and you'll find lots of inspiration over there, I've put the link below this video. Now my version definitely turned out very girly and very British and I hope you like it. I've had great fun playing along and I hope you join me next month when I make another tag inspired by Tim Holtz's 12 tags of 2013. Thank you for watching.